What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Arcade 1UP is not going to be a big fan of me and my channel after this video, my Time Crisis video, and basically every other time I've ever covered them. It's it always seems to be in a negative light, and I, I don't do that on purpose. I want to give every game company equal opportunity, but I'm also not going to lie about my feelings about playing the machine. Even all the way to the Intellivision Amico, when I played the machine, I actually enjoyed my time with it. Whatever the hell was inside of it was fun. So what I try to do is give my honest, raw opinions, and that can sometimes rub especially companies the wrong way. And this video is no different. Last night, I went to Costco with my daughter, go do some shopping, you know, pick up some of the regular stuff. And I saw they had the new arcade one up Star Wars pinball machines. And I was like, oh, this is something that I'm actually interested in. Something that I've been wondering how it plays, what it feels like, and if it would be a relatable type experience to an actual pinball machine. And nope. <laughs> First time to the channel, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com where I give a full breakdown of my thoughts and my experience with this glorious looking machine. And that's really all the good news I have to say about it is, it is beautiful, if not a bit small. It is gorgeous to look at. The side art, the light up marquee, the pictures, how they just pop when you're looking at it. The silver bezels going over everything. It's just, it's a beautiful machine for what it is. And then I got to play in it and I'm just like, oh boy, this, this ain't it. And, and I want to be honest here. I went into it with fairly low expectations. I don't expect a digital screen to perfectly replicate the pinball experience. But this was actually even worse than I thought it was gonna be. As soon as I started playing it, I noticed some things were a little off. The, the lighting of the screen was maybe set too bright. It was a demo unit at Costco, so maybe the people that put together didn't set the settings properly on it, and maybe that can be adjusted. Okay, whatever, I can try to look past that. As I'm playing it, I'm hitting the ball, bouncing it around. I've noticed there's a trail that when you hit the ball really fast, it's like a video game where there's like a tail behind the ball kind of trying to replicate what it would look like in real life, but I've played a ton of pinball in my life and never have I ever felt there's a tail behind the ball while you're playing because real life is real life. There's not like a frame per second lag behind it, so you don't need to try to simulate it. And that was one of the frustrations that kept ticking me off while I'm playing it. I'm like, I just want the ball to be bouncing around. I don't need this tail showing me where it's going, things like that, but Again, maybe that's one of those things you can turn off in the settings. This is this is legitimately just my initial impressions of the demo unit. This is not a full-on review. I only played one of the boards. There are supposedly 10 boards on this thing, and I only played one of them, and it wasn't a great experience. This seems like one of those ideas that was better in theory than in reality. It just... It just doesn't work in real life. Digital simulations, no matter how advanced, can't capture the feeling of the metal ball ricocheting off bumpers. The unique sounds of the flippers, the subtle mechanical vibrations you feel through the machine as you play, nothing can replicate real life pinball. That's what makes pinball so special, so different from an arcade, so different from a screen. It's actual physical objects that are reacting to an environment that can't really be replicated on a screen. No matter how advanced technology gets, Real life is always going to have faster frame per second, so you can't beat that. I always felt like there's a distinct charm with real pinball machines. They're not just games, they're intricate pieces of mechanical art. Every flipper's movement, even the lights flicker in the real pinball machines is a result of intricate engineering. When you play on an authentic machine, you're not just scoring points, you're interacting with a physical piece. And while I don't currently have a real pinball machine at my house, I do go to pinball lounges as often as possible. This past year at San Diego Comic-Con 2023, I went to the Stern Pinball Lounge with my family and had an absolute blast. I talked to the people there. They actually were telling me that I could buy one of the used Star Wars pinball machines 
for $3,000. Now, typically they go a lot higher than that, like five, 6,000, even more for a new one. But this was last year's model. They were trying to clear them out for the new ones that were coming in and they were trying to get rid of these ones. They worked perfectly. Everything was functional. I played them. They were great. And it was only $3,000 for a legitimate, real pinball machine. Now this arcade one up was $700 plus tax. So we're looking at in California, close to $800 for what amounts to a TV screen on a table. And I hate to break it down as basic as that because yeah, there's a lot more in this. There's vibrations and bumpers and things like that that try to replicate real life, but again, that's all it does. That's what it feels like while you're playing it. It just feels like something that's trying to replicate real life instead of real life. And when you're going to be playing a pinball machine, I would think you'd want to play a pinball machine, not something attempting to be a pinball machine. And that's exactly where this falls short. Not to mention the exorbitant price for it. I feel like $700 is asking a tremendous amount of money for it. I was thinking like, Maybe, maybe if they were clearancing these things out and they were like, I don't know, 200 bucks and that's even pushing it, I might consider snagging one. But then you got to consider you got to build it, put it together, set it all up and find a spot for your, for it in your house. And I'm like, ah, oh, geez, I don't know if it's even worth that at that point. $200 is a lot to ask for the experience that I was getting out of playing this for just a very short period of time. And I even go back to when I was at Costco playing it and feeling like, oh God, I feel like this would actually sell better if they did not have a demo unit because the sheer curiosity of wondering how it plays, what it feels like, and is it as good as a real pinball machine would actually push people to buy it more than if they get to play it and realize, yeah, no, this ain't it, bro, and just walk away from it. So I feel like having a demo unit in this case actually hurts Arcade 1UP. <laughs> if there's one thing I'd recommend to them if they're trying to move these units is to stop setting up demo units and just try to push them out the door and hope nobody asks questions on them because that's what I felt about it. I, I would have seriously considered buying one of these if there wasn't a demo unit, because I'm like, oh, $700 for a pinball machine. Ha, huh, that's cheaper than $3,000, and I really want one. My kids really want one. No. My daughter even played it uh, when we were at Costco, and she was bored of it after, like, 50 seconds. She was, didn't even make it a minute. With it. She's like, yeah, no. this." And she was hooked on pinball at the Stern Pinball Lounge at San Diego Comic-Con. So it's not like she does, she's only eight years old. It's not like she doesn't like pinball. She loves it. And she played this and she's like, yeah, no. And I was like, all right, let me try it. And I was like, yeah, okay, no, this this isn't it either. So a swing and a miss, uh, uh, a flipper miss by Arcade 1UP, if you will, on, on the Arcade 1UP Pinball Machine Star Wars edition. I was hopeful for it. And just playing it for a very short period of time instantly turned off any ideas of being interested any further in this machine. But those were my thoughts on it. I'm sure there are people out there that just, I don't know, lo love these for whatever reason. I'm, I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy that you're able to enjoy something like this. But for me, this ain't it. Just like the Time Crisis machine that was, what, $750? That ain't it either. It's too much money for the experience that they're offering, not to mention how much room it takes up in your house. It's almost like the, the when you're eating, you don't want to eat something that's like wasted calories if you're trying to stay fit, stay in shape. You don't want to just eat something just to eat it. You want to make sure if it's going to be bad for you, it better taste really good. And with Arcade 1-Ups, it's like, eh, it's, it's bad for you. And it doesn't taste good either. Why are you putting this in your life? That's what it feels like with these machines. Now I will say, to give something positive to them, they had a Pac-Man full-size arcade next to it, which replicated an actual Pac-Man arcade unit that you'd find back in the day. And that was way more on point with, with what I would be looking for, for some sort of replicating experience at home for an arcade. And that was only $600 for what it was. So, I mean, for that, I guess it makes sense, but 
again, talking to people in the arcade world and what you can find for cheap when there are stores and, and people trying to offload these and get them out, make room in their house, stuff like that. You can buy them secondhand for about this price and have the actual arcade unit that is fully functional in your house. So I don't know. I, I just have this thing about arcade one-ups where I'm like, yeah, this company is not going to be a big fan of me, but I'm also not going to just pretend to love them so that they send me stuff. I understand that Scott Bachrock is no longer the CEO of Arcade One-Up. They're doing some serious shakeups at the top there and they're targeting profitability for 2024. But if it's anything like my experience with this Star Wars pinball machine, I mean, it's it's a long road to, to victory there. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash, change, change.